is Zara Rutherford, the young British Belgian woman that recently flew herself into the world record books after successfully circumnavigating the globe, making aviation history and setting a new world record as the youngest woman to ever do so all by herself. And on her return, broke not just one, but two Guinness World Records as the youngest woman to fly solo around the world and the first woman to circumnavigate the world in a micro light aircraft. It took five months, 71 landings and takeoffs, and flying 32,000 miles to set this new world record. Zara became an instant sensation on announcing her plan to fly solo. She captured the interest of the public and was headlined in the world's media as they followed her record-breaking journey and cheering her on from the beginning to the time her wheels touched down safely and into the record books. Last week, I woke up to the most amazing amount of messages about a young aviator called Zara Rutherford. Zara is embarking on an incredible world record-breaking endeavor. A 19-year-old is on a high-flying adventure to break a world record. To some, it may seem daunting, but to Zara Rutherford, it's all about reaching new heights. There's a big difference between flying um, every now and again with your parents and flying around the world on your own. Je veux vous parler ce soir de Zara Rutherford. Touching down at JFK International Airport Thursday, one week into her journey, and her journey brought her right here to South Florida. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas tardes. Hoy me saludo acompañado de esta it's often said the sky's the limit, but for 19-year-old Zara Rutherford, it's just the beginning. On this Women's Equality Day, we're introducing you to a young woman who's trying to level the airfield. Sobre os detalhes, os perigos e as emoções dessa viagem. Zara has three months left on her journey. Her next stop, Jacksonville, Florida. And of course, we wish her the best of luck. It took just six weeks for Zara to reach her halfway point in Nome, Alaska. She has a few more stops in the United States, including Montana, Washington State, and Alaska. She plans to be in Russia by next week. She touched down today at the Palo Alto Airport. KPIX 5's Max Darrow was there and shares how she hopes to inspire girls around the world. Our Maggie Rooley has been following her incredible journey all along. My name is Zara Dathet. I'm 19 years old and this summer I'm flying solo around the world. I hope the youngest of all to be who does it. I inspire other girls to enter into aviation and science. All the best, you go girl. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a look at the timeline of Zara's trip. Flying around the world is not most teenagers' cup of tea. At first, it wasn't a sense of adventure. I wanted to do something, something crazy that would change my life. And then I realized that, you know, I would maybe get a bit more media attention than I thought I would get. So I thought I'm going to try and use that and, and try and hopefully encourage girls to go into aviation and STEM. So that's second science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Zara is just 19, if you can believe it. She was self-funding this flight to turn her dream into a reality. It just filled me with such inspiration. So as a Virgin family, we were gonna just help you do that, Zora, in every way that we can. So please join me in supporting this adventure of hers and spreading her important message about empowering young women and girls. A member of Honorable Company of A Pilots since 2019, she took up flying at age 14. Zara was born with wings and destiny to fly and her parents support her in her dreams of circumnavigating the globe even if they do worry. Obviously mixed feelings. When she first uh, told me about it my heart skipped a beat. Um, it took me a bit of time to digest and, uh, and now I'm so proud and fully fully behind her. Um, but as I said mixed feelings. Yeah it's, it's exciting. I. Um... It's really excited. I, I, I see the risk, I understand them, uh, so does she. Um, but I'm really proud of what she's doing, not just for herself, but also in, this, in a bid to, to level the playing field for women getting into STEM and aviation. So I think it's fantastic. I 
a bit nervous. I'm also a bit in disbelief. It's, it's weird thinking that I'm finally here, I'm finally leaving. But uh, I'm very excited and I can't wait to go. Well, that's again here, Sarah. Zara set out on her quest aboard a shark ultralight aircraft she chose for her journey in August 18, 2021. I am flying a shark microlight. It's a pretty small plane. Here I'll show you some of the wings. My altitude is at 5,000 feet right now. Minus 14 degrees outside. The microlight is basically an extra small plane and it has some extra limitations to it that makes it a bit more challenging. And there's not much room to move around in a six hour flight. Though her plane may seem small and tiny, it is one of the fastest microlight aircraft in the world with cruising speed reaching up to 300 kilometers per hour and has been specially prepared for such a long trip. This is my mascot with the Bose headset. I've been flying around with me the whole time. Just her, her little clean, and the great big open world beneath her. The moment the wheels leave the ground, it's like this new sense of freedom. Very aware of the risks, but I think she uh, needs to fly away. It's, it's her dream and she needs to live it. Both certified pilots themselves, Zora's parents started taking Zara on their small plane when she was still a toddler. Frequently, of course, she'd be given the opportunity to sit in the front, uh, to start with, of course, on, on about six cushions, uh, to be able to, to manipulate the controls and move the aircraft around. Not just Zara, who has grown up, even her dreams and aspirations have. But now, she's flying on her own and at the other end of the world, trying to inspire other young girls to believe in their dreams. Her flight path took her from Europe to North and South America, over the Middle East, Russia, Asia and Africa, and back to Europe. The goal? 52 countries and 5 continents, and if all goes according to plan, snag the world's record. Shooting some videos of the flight herself, Zara shot through the air across the Atlantic Ocean. She traversed over natural and man-made wonders, open waters, and majestic mountain peaks, glaciers, deserts, vibrant jungles. She talks about how breathtaking it was to see the world from her little plane. You see the most beautiful things like glaciers, some beautiful mountains, flew over an active volcano in Iceland. That was incredible. Uh, luckily it wasn't like very active but you could see the lava flowing and it was gorgeous. I've seen things that I never thought I would have seen in my lifetime. I saw the Hollywood sign from a biplane, I saw a SpaceX launch as well from the plane. I got to kind of see exactly where the first flights took place. And it's, it kind of makes you realize how quickly aviation has evolved. I mean, it, that was only well, 120 years ago. You get to see the side of the planet that you would never get to see otherwise. It's so beautiful. The planet is amazing. Yes, she won! Zara was given a warm welcome everywhere she flew into. I have flown many miles, I think over 10,000 miles. It's been a tough journey but I'm so happy to be here. I've met so many amazing people as well as so many kids that have said that they want to fly as well. It was incredible receiving messages from, I mean both girls and boys, saying Oh, what you're doing is so cool. I, I'd also want to start, I'd like to start flying too, after seeing what you're doing. I love those messages because honestly, it, when I started, I wasn't sure how much of an impact I would make. And so being able to see these messages is just is really nice. My daughter Evelyn is seven years old. She's really into science and Zara is, you know, a real inspiration. I think it's very inspirational because it shows girls and young women that uh, nothing is impossible. Yes, most definitely an inspiration. Always go for your dreams because just like Zara, it's always possible and hopefully me in my future as well, I can do the same thing she's doing. She wants to beat my record and, and I find it really exciting. In all the countries I've been, people have been extremely kind, extremely supportive, so I'm very grateful. If anyone would have told me what, three, two, mo two months ago that I would be paddle boarding with Richard Branson in the Caribbean <laughs> islands, I would have just, I mean, I would have laughed. It would have been ridiculous. I couldn't have asked for more. I'm still in Greece. The weather hasn't been great lately. I'm in Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, so it's about three hours in the air right now, and now I'm in the desert, so there's nothing around me. Uh, and now, actually, there's a few houses here and there. They look like farms. Uh, there's some sort of animal there. I can't, I can't tell what it is. I'm assuming a camel, maybe, or some sort of um, desert cow. I don't know. If that's a thing. Hi, everyone. Right now I'm flying from Indonesia to Sri Lanka. It's a long water flight over the Indian Ocean. I'm a little bit bored, I won't lie. So usually either like putting my parents, picturing myself go going home, maybe even music. Music is actually extremely powerful. And so being able to listen to songs that I recognized or whatever, then that would really help. Although I'm flying solo around the world, it's very much not solo. ICD Soft, a web hosting company from Bulgaria, is my main sponsor. And then there's a ton of other people behind the scenes. And without their support, I just would not be there. However, the teenager's route to glory having been without its challenges. Her journey was expected to take three months, but lasted two months longer due to some unforeseen circumstances. Every flight has been has had some sort of challenge. Fatigue is definitely a factor. I would go for very long hours, not all that much sleep, especially when I'm flying over multiple different time zones uh, within a few days. And mentally, it was a huge challenge. But I'm making sure that I'm always well rested. And there's some more logistical complications that I could delay uh, some days, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I've got a great team supporting me. With individual leg taking up to five hours or more, she ran into her first patch when cloudy conditions caused her to lose radio contact on her approach to Greenland. The first, suddenly the clouds are getting lower and lower. I think at, the, at one point I was at 600 feet above the ocean, which was pretty scary. And then I lost radio contact half an hour into my trip so that meant i had two hours where i couldn't talk to anyone and nobody really knew where i was apart from the tracker of course and now i'm in greenland and it is absolutely stunning when she finally landed safely she texted her parents i'm alive when i reached greenland i just sent two words to my parents which was i'm alive she got stuck in alaska for days due to visa issues hi everyone so i am in Nome, alaska right now i've been stuck here for about a week because I've been waiting for my passport. So right now my Russian visa has just expired. So I'm actually not allowed to go into the country, which is frustrating. I am still in Nome in Alaska. I've been here for almost a month. I've been keeping busy. I've been applying to universities and kind of, you know, keeping the plane all, all ready and happy to go. But yeah, so the weather hasn't been great every time. Either Russia is looking bad or Nome is looking bad. Hopefully tomorrow um, I'll be able to go, but for now I'm gonna head back inside because I'm literally so cold right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then rush here for more than 30 days. There's like nothing, there's no roads, there's no animals, there's no trees. I didn't see a tree for over a month. It was a bit more complicated to sometimes find good fuel or another thing, in the morning before I would fly, the plane would be covered in ice. So it would take at least an hour to try with hot air. I would spend hours just trying to melt and scrub the ice off of my wings because I can't take off with snow on the wings. I got stuck in this tiny town called Ayan with about 800 people. None of them speak English. There was no Wi-Fi. None of the streets actually led outside of the town. So it's only accessible by air. And so that's by far probably the most remote place I've ever been to. However, what helps me a lot is music and then I also listen to podcasts. But it was in Siberia that the gravity of her quest dawned on her. And if anything were to happen, it would have been there. Especially flying over, for example, Siberia, where it's just extremely remote and very cold. So minus 35 degrees Celsius. And if the engine quits, then I yeah. am hours away from rescue. And I don't know how long I can survive in minus 35 degrees. And it was just like, this is all on me now. If anything goes wrong, I don't have anyone to fall back on. I don't have a safety net. Had a flat tire at some point. I had a flat tire in Singapore on the Christmas day. Flew over an erupting volcano in Iceland. If you ever fly over an erupting volcano, it is very bumpy. So that was something I wasn't really prepared for. Thunderstorms, 
low clouds, the wildfires in California, which I wasn't expecting, just a whole range of different stuff that comes up. And not forgetting some very busy skies. She said her most challenging airport was JFK. Coming in was a lot scarier and like sort of yeah, landing and taxiing because you're, you're flying, I mean, just above New York City, um, which I wasn't really used to. Yeah, buildings, 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 buildings. And there's a pretty long queue to take off at JFK. It was these huge planes. It was like Boeing, Airbus, Boeing. And then me, my tiny little plane, Boeing, Airbus, Boeing. <laughs> Maybe six or seven other huge aircraft behind me. And so I line up and ATC clears me for takeoff just after another air, like huge aircraft had taken off. So I kind of awkwardly go, can I just wait one minute, please? <laughs> and one sky she tried to avoid by all means was not Korean sky. And who wouldn't anyway? Straight away I got a response saying, whatever you do, do not go into North Korea. So one thing I wasn't expecting was to have to avoid North Korea. North Korea is over that way. Um, I'm not allowed to get too close to it because they don't like small airplanes flying around. So at first my route took me quite far away from that uh, the airspace. But because of COVID, I had to fly to South Korea from Russia. And suddenly North Korea becomes a problem. And that was a really challenging six hour flight over water, which is a huge detour to try and avoid that, that country. And then I got slightly close to a thunderstorm in Singapore, which was a, a, bit, a bit scary as oh well. And all of this in the midst of global pandemic, but Zara was determined. So I was taking PCR tests all of the time to make sure that I wasn't taking COVID around the world. I think my nose is really starting to suffer a little bit. Some countries are stricter than others. Taiwan was extremely strict, straight from the airport to the hotel, back to the airport. Others, it's kind of do what you want to do, but I choose not to go to touristy places because obviously I don't want to put myself or others at risk. When you're flying along and suddenly this challenge comes up, I can't say I'm done, I'm out, I give up. <laughs> you have to still land the plane, you have to make sure that you get down on the ground safely. We've been telling both our children since they were born is that um, they are capable of everything and anything. Each country is incredible in its own way and very unique as well. However, for me what stands out was these very remote places, so Alaska, Northern Russia, because they're just they're so special and you never get to see them. I will probably never see them again in my life. And it is incredible. It's hundreds and hundreds of kilometers where there's nothing human. And me coming from Europe, which is very populated, I had never seen something like that before. And so seeing hundreds of kilometers where you can't see a single thing human made, it's pretty special. Growing up, Zara said she was discouraged by the lack of female pilots or female computer scientists she saw in the media and she is hoping her voyage may change that for other young girls. And her heroes from the pioneering women who came before her like Emilia Earhart and Bessie Coleman, the first African-American woman to hold the pilot license. Just like those great aviators inspired her, Zara wants to be an inspiration to other young women too, while encouraging interest in aviation-related fields typically dominated by men by taking up courses in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEMs. The current female title holder Shasta Wales flew solo around the world at age 30. The youngest male record holder was 80 years old when he made his trip. There's a 12 year gap between the female world record holder and the male world record holder. So I thought, you know what, that's ridiculous. Zara was giving a heroic welcome back on touching down her home country, Belgium, from where she took off five months ago. She was accompanied on her landing by four planes from the Belgian Red Devils Aerobatic Display Team. 
congratulations Zara and thank you for sharing your adventures with the world. You are all about the future. What great sights you have seen on your journey across the world at such a young age. You stayed in history and made the world come to life through your journey. Though her dreams of flying around the world may be over, the impact of that fate is just beginning. And I know that the story of her bravery will resonate amongst many for generations to come. This is a, a, a platform for her to do whatever she wants to do with her life. And uh, this is very definitely not the end of something, but the beginning of something. When I started planning for this, I didn't actually realize I would be beating a record. For me, it was a dream I've had for a really long time. It's just really crazy. I haven't quite processed it, I think. I mean, coming here, I was basically in tears, just trying to imagine what it'd be like to finally be home after five months. So I'm just super happy. One thing I've learned on this trip is that you are capable of more than you think you are. Looking back, there's some things that I would have said, I can't do that. But then I actually did, didn't do them. So if you're able to push yourself outside of your comfort zone safely and slowly try and learn more and then you'll see and you'll prove to yourself that actually you can do things you didn't think you'd be able to do. And for Zara, the world record is just one of her dreams. Now I'm back at home and on the record books, she's now focused on her next challenge, studying computer science in college and one day becoming an astronaut. You can follow Zara's World Trip on her YouTube channel and also on her social media accounts at Fly Solo. Thank you for watching and I hope you have been inspired to do something crazy and interesting with your life just like Zara.